Our leaders keep telling us that we are in a war. At least that's what I hear whenever they start making excuses as to why they need to confiscate our firearms again. Greetings and welcome back to Here's What I Heard. I'm Laura Degatis, your hostess. Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Today's video is just going to touch a little bit upon how important the Second Amendment actually is. Biden has now started a narrative in which handguns are now becoming weapons of war. The future's cut short by a man with a stolen Glock with 40 rounds, a magazine with 40 rounds, uh, and uh, it's really a weapon of war. And you could actually say, especially these days, that folks like this are actually defending themselves against the tyrannical government. I mean, think about it. With all these new laws and police reforms that are closing down shops and coddling common and not so common criminals that are causing these spikes in crime, I think that they're creating these problems with a purpose in mind, don't you? It seems as though they want to make life and living so miserable for their citizens, and what could be more miserable than watching your once beautiful city or town turn into this? But they want to make life so miserable for their law-abiding citizens by letting the dregs, which most should be either incarcerated or hospitalized, roam around and cause and create havoc, so that eventually it will get so bad that the citizens will come begging to the establishment that is actually causing all this trouble to begin with. Due to their new, more humane laws, they are essentially letting the criminals do the work for them, and then they get to keep the money that would normally be paid to these jails and hospitals. See how that works? And of course, you know who's paying that bill. The ones that are suffering this fate. Then, when our leaders finally do have to do something for the public after sometimes years and years and years of backlash, they punish everyone except the criminals. Of course, by that time, they've already disposed of the criminals. Cases in point, just look at the difference between the treatment of Kyle Rittenhouse and Daryl Brooks. Need I say more? These new dictates and creeds that empower and embolden criminals while chastising and tying cops' hands are being put upon all of us while the powers that be profess their humanitarianism and nobleness while they excuse their actions by pointing the finger of blame on the very people that they are claiming to care about, by taking everything away from them, including their money, their livelihoods, and their freedoms. Heck, in a lot of cases, they are even going after their kids. Nobody is safe from these people. Most of them are now saying, or even mandating, don't like crime? Run away! Really? from your own homes and businesses? Isn't that what 2A is supposed to be for? But you have organizations like this. Now the gun control group Ceasefire PA says it is a myth that a gun increases safety. It says it only increases aggression and that public policy would be better focused on to stop legal trafficking of firearms. As if they want you to not believe what you have just seen with your very own eyes. Or they just want folks to stand there and allow themselves to get shot or be criminalized. Uh, you know, that is a major cause of death, right? I would love to see these folks in these uh, 
anti-2A groups just show us how it's done. In other words, you first, asshole. I guess they just don't get to see videos like this. Notice how this mob is all about messing with this old man until he pulls the gun. Then what did they do? First they backed right the fuck down, didn't they? Then they started screaming for the very folks that they want off the streets. How does that work? And of course you notice that he was all for them. Oh, of course it would have been him against all of them, not that they would have done anything to him, but at the same token they don't have any respect for authority, as you can see the man did. But yeah, obviously he was scared for his life. They kept inching closer and closer. They were throwing shit at him. They were pepper spraying him. I mean, once you go blind like that, anything can happen to you. Perhaps these anti-2A folks are so inclined to watching something and making up their own narrative that the truth just escapes them. They wouldn't know it if it punched them in the teeth. Well, so far, this isn't working out so well for their side either. Let me show you a couple of cases in point. CWB Chicago. Now, this is an older uh, uh, article from December of 2021, but it's not that old. And uh, I don't know if after this they started hiding this kind of thing happening or not. A lot of people don't like to admit that they were wrong. However, Senator who, who championed Illinois' criminal justice overhaul is carjacked at gunpoint. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Chicago is one of the most uh, gun-controlled cities in the world. So, how did this happen? Offenders even fired shots at her husband. Now, I read later on, supposedly, let's see, uh, they updated it on the 23rd. Authorities now say that Lightford's husband has a concealed carry holder, and he fired at least some of the shots during the incident. Case of okay for me, but not for thee, perhaps? How is he get? you know, they have gun control laws and everything like that, but it's okay for this guy to have a gun. But... Illinois Senate State Majority Leader Kimberly Lightford, who campaigned the state's criminal justice reform omnibus leg legislation in January, was carjacked at gunpoint in suburban Broadview on Tuesday evening, authorities said. One of the hijackers fired multiple gunshots at Lightford's husband, but he was not injured. Now, again, thank you, God, for these people, not, nobody being injured. We don't want people hurt. This is not what we're after. We just want them to see the light. Of course, I don't think that that's going to be the case. There's going to be some excuse. Three masked men exited a Dodge Durango and hijacked Lightford's Mercedes-Benz SUV at gunpoint on the 2000 block of South 20th Avenue around 9.45 p.m., according to a statement from the village's chief of justice, chief of police. Lightford confirmed the incident in a short statement saying that she was thankful that my husband and I are alive and physically unharmed. I'm trying to process the trauma of what happened. Yeah. She thanked the Broadview Police Department for their quick and thorough response. Her husband, Eric McKinney, was driving their Mercedes when the carjacker struck. Police did not say, and of course you saw the update. Yes, he did, he did do the firing. Lightford helped lead the charge to pass the state's statewide ranging overhaul of criminal justice-related laws, which passed in January, among other things. The law decriminalized absences of less than 48 hours by people who are ordered to stay on pretrial electronic monitoring, and it will eliminate cash bail in January of 2023. Lightford is at least the second major sponsor of legislation to fall victim to criminals this year. 
Uh, Senator Elga Sims of Chicago was publicly angered when another driver who allegedly pointed a handgun at him was, as they drove in Springfield, got out of jail by posting $1,500. So they got, there's more than one person that's getting affected by these laws that they're putting out there. Police arrested 54-year-old Michael Hoyle in connection with the incident. Prosecutors charged him with unlawful use of a weapon, possession of a firearm with a revoked firearm owner's ID, and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The case is still ongoing according to the Sar Sangamon County Court records. So, this guy was released on $1,500 bail. Or no. Okay, for the, for the Sims one. And, of course, one month earlier, Sims had tweeted, that, like I say, this person says, money doesn't, money bond doesn't guarantee public safety or someone's appearance in court. It supports a system where freedom is based on the size of someone's bank account. We've tried and failed tough on crime policies of the past. So you're going to get light on crime and think that that helps, which, as you're saying, it doesn't. Another case in point here. Democratic Congresswoman who sponsored police reform bill carjacked in crime surging Philadelphia. Not even 24 hours, not even within 24 hours of the hijacking in Chicago. Scanlon was the second elected Democrat to be carjacked in a major city in 24 hours. Representative Mary Gay Scanlon, Democrat Pennsylvania, was carjacked at gunpoint in Philadelphia on Wednesday as crime continues to surge in the major cities across the country. Wednesday afternoon around 2.45 p.m., Congressman Scanlon was carjacked at Conpoint at FAR Park following a meeting at that location. Broad fucking daylight. Broad day. 2.45 p.m. That's broad daylight. The Congresswoman was physically unharmed. She thanks the Philadelphia Police Department for their swift response and appreciates the effort of both the Sergeant at Arms in D.C. and her local police department for coordinating with Philly PD to ensure her continued safety. First of all, if this is her, yes, U.S. Representative Mary Scanlon speaks at a news conference at the U.S. Capitol September 21st. Uh, does she look like she actually represents anybody in South Philly? Scanlon's phone and purse were stolen by the attacker, according to WPVI-TV of Philadelphia. Police say Scanlon was approached by two black males, aged approximately 20 to 30, as she walked to her vehicle before they demanded she hand them her keys. Scanlon handed over the keys to her blue 2017 Acura MDX, and one of the suspects drove away in it while the other drove away in a dark-colored SUV. Scanlon represents Pennsylvania's 5th Congressional District, which includes part of South Philadelphia. Again, really? So far in 2021, the Philadelphia Police Department has reported 521 homicides, which is a 13% increase compared to 2022 or 2020, and the city's highest number of killings since at least 2007. Scanlon was not the first prominent Democrat official, and of course they go on to explain that the per, they they go on to compare this with the the thing in Chicago. So this is what happens when these not even the people that generated these awful 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 policies that are causing a lot of this crime are safe from this and you wonder what did they think was going to happen did they actually think oh that'll never happen to me however now from what i can tell they were able to get plenty of police help in fact, within hours, the perpetrators were caught and processed. Hmm. Cops won't even go into some of these neighborhoods, but they have these leaders' cases solved within hours? Yeah, who's really in danger here? And of course, you know this means that they're not only going to continue to take our money and fund these stupid policies, but they're going to take our money and uh, arm themselves up even more. And get you know use our money to to uh, get private details and things like that when the cops won't even come to a lot of neighborhoods now because of them i don't think it is who they are telling you that they are that are in danger i could be wrong but this is just what i hear maybe you can convince me otherwise but i doubt it 
I always believe my own eyes and thoughts for that matter. And don't forget, the Second Amendment is actually one of the main reasons why we are not Australia or Canada right now. I do hope you enjoyed my video today. Please don't forget about Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. Central Time, 8 p.m. Eastern, and 5 p.m. Avocado Time, the Talk to Me America series call-in talk show, where you get to tell the world what you heard. And of course, the world wants to know what you have to say. So please, call me and tell them like it is. Also, if you'd like to see me continue this work and, of course, upgrade my system so that the feeds are much better for you, <laughs> please give me a like, a share, a subscription, a comment, and, of course, a donation would be the ultimate. All of my links are below, including ones you can find me on alternative platforms. Because you know the drill. Click on some of them, will ya? Thank you for clicking on my little acre of the internet today. Until next time!